This video tutorial will help solve free response problem number four from the 2012 AP Chemistry exam. A couple quick reminders about free response question number four. They always take the same format. They'll ask you to balance an equation and then answer a follow-up question about that balanced equation. A few things to remember about the balancing. Uh, we assume that the reactants are in the aqueous phase and if they ionize are completely ionized. In addition, any spectator ions or things that don't react are ignored uh, and only the reacting species are included in the balanced equation. All right, the first one, a solid piece of strontium carbonate is dropped into a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So we're starting with solid strontium carbonate. So you need to be able to figure out the, the chemical formula for strontium carbonate shown here. Strontium is a 2 plus. It's in the uh, period or sorry, family uh, 2A, the beryllium family. And carbonate ion, of course, CO3 2 minus. And now hydrochloric acid is uh, shown as H plus. The chloride ion is not included. Um, when metal carbonates are introduced to an acid, carbon dioxide gas is given off. So we're going to see some bubbling from a gas. The acid is neutralized, so you have water produced. And then some other ion species, metal ion, is uh, retained in solution. So the strontium 2 plus. So you can see we need to not only balance ions in this, but also balance charges. And we have a, a 2 plus charge from the strontium 2 plus. That means I need to balance the hydrogens, and I have two hydrogens in my water on the right as a product. So now both charge and mass are balanced. Now the second follow-up part of that question says what would be observed. Well, we've already said that a gas is produced, so that's, I think, the most obvious answer is that bubbling or fizzing would be observed as the gas is generated as the gas is evolved, let's say. Another possible answer, fully correct, is that the solid dissolves. The solid uh, disappears or dissolves over time. So that's another possible right answer. The solid dissolves. Part B, magnesium metal is strongly heated in oxygen gas. So it's magnesium solid and oxygen gas. It's going to produce an oxide of magnesium. What's the formula? Well, magnesium is a 2 plus. Oxygen is almost always a 2 minus oxidation state, except what's in, in peroxides. So we've got a compound of MgO. We've got a little balancing to do because I've got two oxygens. So I'll put a 2 here and a 2 here. And that's the correct formula. Uh, we've already actually answered the second question. What's the oxidation number of magnesium before and after the reaction? Now, before, magnesium is in its elemental state, so uh, it has an oxidation state of zero. After, magnesium is a 2 plus. Part C, solution of nickel 2 chloride is added to a solution of sodium hydroxide, forming a precipitate. So if a precipitate has formed, you know it's a double exchange reaction. You just got to figure out what the precipitate is. Um, so the two possible products of the double exchange are sodium chloride. We know that's not the precipitate. Sodium compounds are always soluble. So the other compound, nickel-2 hydroxide, a metal hydroxide, which are very often insoluble, is our very likely precipitate. Now, the balanced chemical equation, again, chloride is going to be a spectator ion. So we just show the, the ions that react. And this is going to be a 2O minus. OH minus, sorry, produces nickel 2 hydroxide as such. Now, follow up question if equal volumes of one molar nickel 2 chloride and one molar nic uh, sodium hydroxide are used, what ion is present in the solution in the highest concentration after the precipitate forms? Be careful, this is a little bit of a trick question in that you're thinking precipitate, what's left over after the precipitate forms, meaning you've got to identify the limiting reactant and what is in excess, et cetera. But that's not quite the case. Remember, we start off, as the question states, with 1.0 molar of each one of the two reactants. And some of the nickel gets consumed in forming the, uh, in forming the solid precipitate, and some of the hydroxide gets consumed. In fact, all of the hydroxide, that's the limiting reactant. Uh, but 
uh, notice what we have left behind. Some of the hydroxide got consumed in forming the precipitate, so there's less than 1.0 molar left behind. Actually, it's all gone in solution. Um, but what is left behind is we've got 1.0 molar solution of Na plus from the, uh, the spectator ion in the sodium hydroxide. But notice the chloride. The chloride, you've got two moles of Cl minus for every nickel, chlor nickel two chloride molecule. So you've got two times 1.0 molar or a 2.0 molar solution of chloride ion left behind. That's one of the spectator ions. So the answer to the question, the, the ion in the highest concentration afterwards is chloride, Cl minus. Mm -hmm.